The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. Uh, our first speaker is uh, Amr Saeed from uh, Sika Corporation, and he is going to talk about wrap documents uh, one and two. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming up. just want to acknowledge first the authors of these two documents. None of them are authored by me. The first document, wrap one, which talks about crack injection, was authored by Mr. Rick Montani from Sika Corporation. The second doc, I'm sorry, by Brian Keene. And the second document, uh, which talks about crack repairs in concrete by gravity feed, was authored by Rick Montani. There are certain things which are bound to happen in life, as we all know, like death, taxes, and if you're in the concrete business, we all know that concrete, as, as good of a job as you can do, is bound to crack for reasons that we know what are there for. And there are definitely means and methods to restore those concrete elements which have gone through some cracking, and there's two well-known methods, one of them which, are, which is epoxy by crack injection, and the other is uh, epoxy repairs by gravity feed. The first one, the wrap document number one, talks about epoxy injection. When you inject epoxy into cracks in concrete, what you're doing is you're basically restoring the structural integrity of the cracks. And once, once that crack is sealed, it also helps you seal the ingress of chloride and moisture into the concrete, which we all know is not good for concrete. How does the epoxy work? So epoxy typically are two component products, uh, A's and B's, typically resin and the hardener, and they are formulated uh, and, and, and developed to basically work with a schematic ratio, either a one-to-one -one or a two-to-one or a three-to-one ratio. Once they are mixed, they have a defined pot life. That they will basically be fluid for a certain amount of time, and after that, it will go through a process where it's called gelling of the, of the material, and, of course, it then transforms into semi-solid, and then once it's all cured, it becomes a solid material. As we know, epoxies are basically thermostatic resins. They, have, they are formulated to acquire different, uh, different properties, which can range from different models of elasticity. And whenever we talk about epoxies, one thing that basically comes up very often is the viscosity. The viscosity, as we all know, is the ability of the material to flow, and, and, and basically just trying to refresh our memories, the viscosity of water is like one centipoise, and the viscosity of syrup is 3,000 centipoise. This is relevant to epoxy and crack repair because the thinner the epoxy, the more likely it is going to penetrate into fine cracks. So if you're looking for crack injection, we should be looking at thin epoxies, and it depends on the application too. Epoxies at the same time are also exothermic reaction. They produce heat. The mixing time is critical. And, of course, you have to manage the working time that is allowed by the epoxy that you're using. Uh, where is the epoxy injection method used in concrete repair? These are typically used in vertical and overhead cracks for horizontal. The wrap two documents, which talks about gravity feed, is probably a much more preferred method because as it's easier. It is also used for structural crack repairs. Now, one thing we have to establish when we do crack repairs is to identify what kind of cracks are we addressing if the cracks are dynamic or static. If the cracks are dynamic and they're moving, epoxy may not be the best way to address the problem. But if they are static cracks and need a structural fix, you may have to use a high modulus rigid system of repair, which is epoxies. Cracks as thin as two thousandths of an inch can be injected with success or have been injected with success. There is a basic ASTM C8081 specification published, which governs the use of epoxies for different repair applications. That document classifies epoxy resins based on 
different properties, including strengths, models of elasticity, elasticity, working time, viscosity, and a lot of host of other parameters. When we talk about epoxy injection, some basic tools or equipment that you're going to need is injection ports, wire brush, air guns, uh, a delivery system, uh, some capsules. And before we start the process, we definitely have to make sure we cover the safety aspect of it. Epoxy are dangerous, hazardous materials. Uh, we have to make sure our, that we use the proper PPE before we get into an injection process and, and make sure that we, if there is an epoxy injection work that is happening into a structure, we notify the occupants. I mean, I've been to jobs where people have injected columns or, or slabs, and the resident has kind of found the uh, found its way to the other side of the member, causing problems. So we have to make sure we, proper precaution is taken. First of all, the preparation needs for epoxy, for crack injection, we have to make sure the, the half inch wide on either side of the cracks are prepared to receive an epoxy paste. This paste, which you put down, is basically just a cap seal. It is not an integral part of the epoxy injection process, but it definitely holds the resin that you will be injected inside the crack. Wire brushing is recommended. Grinders may not be the best way to prep the area because if you are grinding the surface for the cap seal, you may be putting more dust into the cracks that you will be injecting. If concrete that, is, that you're injecting is not, is not stable, is deteriorated, you're better off re-notching the cracks just to make sure you get back to sound concrete before you start the injection process. Uh, this tip four process, uh, which you can break down this application into. The first one is port installation, and the second process will be the cap seal installation. The third will be injecting the epoxy, and the fourth will be removing, removing the ports and the cap seal. Uh, what you do when you have a crack is the first step, like I said, is basically you stick a port into it. There are multiple types of port. This document talks about this document only talks about two types of ports, but there are many more do- uh, ports out there which have been which have been developed for epoxy crack injection. Some of them commonly used are the, the surface mounted, I can see in the first picture, and the other one is the socket mounted, which is used in cracks, which are typically blocked with contamination. As far as spacing for crack injection, these ports are typically spaced about six to eight inches apart. There is a school of thought which says that the, thicker, the thickness of the concrete member which you're injecting in should be how far you space your injection ports. So if you're injecting a 12-inch member, you can space the ports about 12 inches apart. And this varies from, from situations to situations. There is not a hard science to it, but these are the typical guidelines. You can also inject multiple ports at the same time by using a manifold technique. You're basically pumping resin through one source and diverting the resin, making it flow through multiple channels, like in the bottom picture. The first process, like I said, is installing the cap seal, and this method is basically used to to make sure that the surface of the crack is sealed. Because the port is now installed, you will have to make sure that the surface of the crack is sealed, because once you inject epoxy into the cracks, you want to make sure that the epoxy stays within the crack. So essentially, this cap seal is doing nothing more but providing you a form work for the epoxy that you will be injecting. Now, I have been to jobs where if the installation of the cap seal is not done right, you can have problems. And the bottom picture on the right-hand corner of the screen, you can see that if the cap seal starts leaking, you will get epoxy all over the place, which is not what the intention is, right? You want the epoxy to go inside the crack, not all over the place. Cap seals, typically, I would say most of the time, epoxies are used, but there are certain instances where people have used polyester wax or silicone caulk. But one has to make sure that whatever injection pressure that you will be using to inject the epoxies in can sustain, that the material that you're using will be able to sustain that pressure. Now, there are definitely tools and sophisticated equipment out there which will meter the epoxies depending on what the ratio is, whether it's set for 2 to 1, 1 to 1, 3 to 1 epoxy by, by, by design, and they will mix at the same time and dispense the epoxy at the same time. So there's no mixing taking place. You basically are mixing and pumping the resin at the same time. Typically, you start at the widest point, and if you're injecting a vertical, a vertical crack, you inject from the bottom up. You, typically, you would definitely keep on injecting the resin until you get more epoxy from the next port up. Uh, if there is a very fine crack, you can definitely increase the time you are basically using to inject the cracks, but one has to be very careful in basically increasing the time and the pressure, because if you keep on increasing the time and the pressure, you can have negative consequences too. When injection into port is complete and you see the epoxy coming out from the adjacent port, you can go back and crimp that particular port and seal it off completely.
Now, once the epoxy injection is complete, you can remove it by you can remove the ports by 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 knocking them off. And if you want to basically get a smooth surface, you can either heat the epoxy paste that was used as the as the injection paste by heating, chipping, or grinding. Now, if you, if aesthetics is not an issue for anybody, if it is in one of the areas where you don't have to worry about how it looks, you can leave that particular paste on the surface of the concrete. It is not going to harm the application. It is just an eyesore. For any application that you do, you want to verify that the process that was taken was accomplished has been done successfully and uh, there's a couple of ways we can actually verify that the cracks that were basically injected have been injected successfully the best way and the most practical way that I have seen in the industry is basically taking cores you just go ahead and basically take random cores of the sample area and that frequency will have to be established by the engineer and, and, and the people involved, in making a decision how, how frequent you have to take the course. But once the cores are established, taken, you can visually see the cracks, you can put them into a microscope, and uh, you can put it into a blue light. Um, and that will basically highlight the resin very clearly. And one of the best ways which I've learned from my experience in, in verifying that the crack is sealed properly is you take a big heavy hammer and you hit the, hit the base core with it. And if the crack does not, if the, the core does not crack, at the point where it was injected around the crack area, that means that the epoxy injection has been done successfully. You can also do a splitting tensile test on it and make sure that the crack basically, when you try to split the core, the, the core splits at a different place, not at the place where you just repaired the crack with the epoxy injection. There are non-destructive ways, which are not typically seen in, in the verification of the epoxy injection process, but can be used or impact echo, UPVs, and spectral analysis of surface waves.